Hey y'all, Bob with Million Mile Garage. We're actually degreeing our cam. We've got our card here, and it shows the measurements at six thousandths uh, lobe lift. And we've already kind of rolled through it a couple times. I was just going to kind of show you where we were at. And right now we're looking at 63 degrees after bottom dead center. Um, and that's when the intake valve closes. And you can see we are at, if I can get the glare to go away, and get it lined up. We are at six thousandths lobe lift. And just looking down here, looks like we're uh, right at 63 degrees, plus or minus a quarter degree. Of course, you can see I've got my uh, my genius coat hanger pointer set up here with a, uh, about the cheapest timing wheel I could find on Amazon. I think it was actually from a motorcycle <laughs> company. But anyway, I drilled the hole out. It works. By the way, I just took a uh, an air wrench. And what we did is because, you know, a lot of times uh, the uh, degree wheel will move on you if you're just using the, uh, the balancer bolt on the crank. And what we did is we just uh, moved the de uh, degree wheel back about five degrees uh, from uh, top dead center when we set it up. And then when we tightened it, uh, we basically uh, it moved about five degrees and we stopped at five a little after. And then we just kind of moved the pointer so it was still set at uh, top dead center. And of course, we used our dial indicator as well to set top dead center on the piston itself, which we didn't show. And uh, just real happy that uh, it pretty much, uh, the cam card pretty much agrees uh, with the way we set our degree wheel up. Everything seems to be in sync. Just kind of a good thing to do. You know, we also use the clay method, but um, I thought maybe we'd just go ahead and just roll through this one time and uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick up on, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and do the, uh, since we're already set up on the intake, right? We'll, uh, we'll roll through this again. And uh, he's going to have to go through a few times. We'll just keep an eye on this. And I know when he gets up to, uh, we'll have to wait for the intake to open as well. All right, slow down right there. I'll grab the card. So I already forgot what we we're at. We're at uh, intake opens at uh, 27 uh, before top dead center. Okay. And you're already right around 27 plus or minus a half or a quarter degree. And he's got that also at around six thousandths. I apologize for the glare, it's dark in here. Yep, you can see that six thousandths lobe lift right there. Everything's working. We're just using a magnetic uh, dial indicator stand because our uh, pistons do not go uh, above the deck. So we're okay to do that. They're not gonna run into anything. So uh, so there we go. I think we, uh, yeah, that's 27-ish that's right there. Yep, so it says, 27 degrees before top dead center at six thousandths and that's where we're at okay cool all right so i think we're set here i think we're ready to start uh, bolting the rest of the parts on this engine we'll kind of keep you guys going on this project as we uh, as we complete it i'm hoping we'll have this engine in the car and running within two weeks from today all right last thing we're going to do is we're going to check the lobe intake center line and basically what we're going to try to do is find out where the maximum lift is um, in relation uh, to where the camshaft is uh, after top dead center. So I've got a little mini right angle deal here and I'm just going to make sure I've got this uh, rod set up as square as I can to the block. So it's like it would be if it had a cylinder head on it. Kind of looking at it this way and then I'm just kind of coming in this way looking from up here. If you look down that way, I got it pretty close. Keep in mind the accuracy might be off a little bit if you don't have this perfectly in line like it would be if you know if it actually had the cylinder head on. I've already gone in and zeroed this out, so we've got the lifter on the heel. And what I'm going to try to do is bring this up to max lift, and then I'm going to read on the degree wheel where we're at. So according to the card, right here, it says our intake center line is at 108 degrees. So we're going to see if we have max lift, and we're measuring at the lobe. So it'll be at 321 approximately. And let's see what we get. So I'm gonna roll this over. Let's, uh, we'll take a look at the timing wheel and the, uh, the pointer. And basically every trip around here is a 10th of an inch. This is gonna go around 3.21 times roughly. All right, so there's the first trip around. There's the second trip around. There's the third. Let's see what we get for max lift. We're coming up on 321. 
and it's like 320 is all it's got. You know, again, I'm going to say probably the accuracy has to do with the person setting up this equipment. I'm going to say it's probably 321. I'm going to bring it back around just so we can see. But let's go ahead and just bring it up to 320 and see where we land on the degree wheel. All right. So there's max load lift that I can attain with that. So we're at 0 0.320 lift. And let's see where we are on the degree wheel. Ow. We come down here and we count. It looks like three after this. If we come down here, here's zero. There's 45 degrees. There's 90, 95, 100, 105. Looks like six, seven, eight. So it basically lands on 108. Now, what we can do to kind of uh, see exactly where we are in the lobe, right? Because we don't know if we're just on the end of the lobe, in the middle of the lobe, whatever. Um, I can go ahead and take this. Uh, I'm going to take it 20 thousandths past the max lift in this direction, and then we'll go back the other way. I'm going to take a reading. Just bring it, sneak up. When it gets to zero, that'll be 10 past. Okay. I'm going to try to read this down here. And I'm basically at uh, 40, let's see. That's basically 135. Okay. So if I write 135 down, if I can find what I did with my, my marker, let's put 135 here. All right. And then we're going to add the next number. Let's come back over here. I'm going to bring it around in the other direction. Okay, so when it's landing on that 20, I'm going to try to sneak up on it. Okay, that looked like about 20 right there. So we're back at 0 0.320. And now we're going to bring it back 20 thousandths in the other direction. Again, it's going to move the same way. It's just going on the other side. But you know, we're moving in the opposite direction. I'm going to stop at zero because uh, that's 20 thousandths away from where we were right there. 10, 20. And see what the wheel says. And it says 80. All right, so if we add 80 to that, was it 9, 10, 11, 215 divided by two, what is that gonna come out to? I'm saying that's gonna be 107.5. So they're saying 108 degree center line, and I'm gonna say that's close enough. If you're within a half a degree, I'd say that cam is pretty much around the way they said it was. So we'll probably attribute that half a degree off to probably the, uh, the checker's error. That could either be the equipment or maybe the person using it isn't smart enough. I'm not sure. But I feel pretty confident that the cam they sent us matches the card. So we know we have a pretty good idea that all of this is going to be opening and closing the valves as comp cams intended. Um, the other thing we'll do just for shiggles, I know we already did the, the clay method, which I think you guys may have already seen. And you can see we've got a ton of valve clearance. I think I only showed it on the exhaust side. Um, but we're going to put the cylinder head back on, and then we're going to also use the degree wheel, and we're going to figure out uh, with the gauge exactly how much piston to valve clearance we've got on both the intake and the exhaust. But I feel pretty good that when we button this engine up, um, all of the uh, valve opening and closing events are happening as intended.